call to order the meeting of the Board of Directors of uh, Friday, February 23rd, 2024. Please note this meeting is being recorded. And thank you to everyone joining us today in person and through our audio option. I appreciate everyone's patience as we move through today's meeting. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So I'm going to start with Director Conroy. Sassman. Dorsey. Present. Guardio. Present. Garbarina. Present. Judice. Here. Roscoe. Here. Fernandez. Here. Mastin. Here. Molson Peters. Here. R. Present. Verdoni. Here. Stephanie. Absent. Snyder. Here. Stephanie. Present. Stereo. Here. Thank you. And I'm going to hold off on um, calling Director Stare. She's actually on the line. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually pulling everyone in the room. Uh, so Director Stereo. Uh, Second Vice President Rapid. Here. First Vice President Hill. Here. And President Cochran. Here. Thank you. That's everyone in the room. Now I'm going to ask Director Stare, are you on the line? Present. Thank you. Perfect. You have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to remind my colleagues to uh, press the button on your microphone when speaking. If you see the red lights on, your microphone is live. When you open up for director discussion, please raise your hand and the sector I will call on you accordingly. If we miss your raised hand, please speak up. Following any discussion, we will take the appropriate vote. Uh, please follow along by referring to page numbers located at the bottom right-hand corner of our meeting package. And uh, Director Hill, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Thank you, Director Bill. Madam Secretary, please continue with the next item on the agenda. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is public comment. We do have one speaker card for uh, speakers in the room. Are there any other speakers who are here in the room with us today that might want to speak that we don't have a card for? You can just raise your hand at the same time. And then after we do the ones in the room, we'll do the ones online. Okay, I'm not seeing any hands, so we're going to invite the first person up, and that's Mr. Rohde. Can you join us at the end of the table, please? Good morning. My name is Dave Rohde. I'm the San Francisco Policy Co-Chair for the Climate Reality Project, a group of 1,500 climate policy advocates here in the Bay Area with 100,000 members around the globe. After an in-person training with former Vice President Al Gore, his uh, team updates us weekly on national clean energy policies and the political battles going on around the country to mitigate climate change. As you know, I've focused on transportation, the sector that generates the largest share of greenhouse gas emissions. For the past five years, I've been speaking at your board meetings because I believe that as an independent state government agency, the Golden Gate Bridge District has a unique opportunity to, to, lead, to be a leader in clean energy transit systems. I have been encouraged, but not entirely satisfied by the reaction of this board and the district management. Last month, in response to my call for a district climate action plan, Deputy General Manager Kelly Hopper confirmed that the district has, I quote, climate consciousness and that addressing climate change is a component of the Strategic Planning Committee. Since the Strategic Planning Committee meetings aren't open to the public, I can only hope that climate change and the District of Zero Emissions goals are a consistent topic of discussion. And I'm hoping to see reports that the committee is engaging the entire board of directors and the public with the reports. Let me address one key goal your climate action plan should include. You've got to reduce and finally eliminate your use of biofuels. I know what you use is called a renewable diesel, an oxymoron if there ever was one. For the last few years, I've been working with scientists at the International Council on Clean Transportation and Dr. Tim Searchinger from Princeton. They are some of the foremost experts on biofuels. First, 
The millions of dollars you're spending on biofuel is going directly into the pockets of big oil. They're refining it, selling it, and receiving tax credits from the state of California. And it's not because big oil suddenly cares about the climate crisis. When you take into account the emissions from planting, fertilizing, harvesting, and refining biofuels, you're responsible for more greenhouse gas emissions than if you were burning petroleum diesel. To make matters worse, the food crops being used for biofuel feedstocks is leading to food scarcity in some parts of the world. I implore you to set a timeline for eliminating biofuels, and that means electrification, not switching over to hydrogen. On a personal note, I'll be unable to speak at the next few board meetings. After throat surgery next week, I will lose my voice for a while, but I assure you, I'm not going to let cancer stop my advocacy for Golden Gate Bridge Climate Action Plan. I plan to live long enough to ride on one of your electric ferries. Thank you for listening. Wow. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Brody. <laughs> Justine, I'm going to pass it over to you so you can introduce your speakers on your public line. Thank you. Our speaker this morning is David Pilpel. David, go ahead. Great. Uh, David Pilpel again. Good morning. Um, so first item, the Golden Gate Transit Amalgamated uh, Retirement uh, Plan, the GGT ARP or Pension Board uh, meeting uh, last week on February uh, 15th was not organized like a district meeting. Uh, I would note that um, Amaret, her staff, Justine, and those behind uh, the scenes here make uh, public meetings seem easy and smooth. Uh, I did not uh, find the pension board meeting to be uh, any of those things. I learned more about the main uh, action item eight at uh, that meeting in today's general manager report than I did at the meeting. And it appears to me that um, although on page three of today's general manager's uh, report, um, there was reference to updating tables A, B, D, D1, uh, and D2, that the action that uh, the pension board took uh, last week was only to amend tables D1 and D2. Um, so um, I, they did not, and apparently currently do not, uh, post their um, agenda packets, and so the uh, public... Um, Active employees, retirees, beneficiaries don't uh, see the the detail. Anyway, it's just it's their board. It's not this board. Um, that's all I can say about that. But I do appreciate uh, the general manager's uh, continued uh, determination to um, fix uh, that pension plan for everyone's benefit. Uh, next, after yesterday's uh, AT&T phone outage, the district uh, might want to review its electric. Uh, radio and uh, telecom uh, risks. Um, the more we invest in technology uh, and rely on it, the more uh, we're dependent on that. And if something goes down, uh, there could be uh, problems. Um, and I, you know, worry a little bit. And I'm sure there are uh, people at the district that worry a lot about uh, safety, security, and reliability of the district facilities and services. So I just wanted to. Uh, raise that concern. And finally, on item 10A today, uh, delegating authority for transit service uh, changes, um, I don't object to it uh, for another year, but I would like to um, see reports either in the written general manager's report or preferably at a transportation uh, committee meeting. The district made a number of service changes in January, including uh, two new commute bus routes from Sonoma County, and I do not recall hearing or seeing any public report of those uh, transit service changes, which I'm sure are good and hopefully well received. So uh, those are my thoughts. Thanks again for listening. Thank you, Mr. Felfel. Justine, do you have any other speakers on the line? I would like to poll again, if you don't mind. Sure, go ahead. Okay, thank you so much. Is there anybody new that's joined us that would like to speak at the board meeting this morning? Please mm -hmm. use star star. To unmute yourself and let me know. Okay, I'm not hearing anybody else. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your comments. Oh, there we go. So, sure, come on up. Ken purchase at the table. So Shane would like to make a comment. 
I mean, everyone, I'm going to try to make this as fast as possible. Uh, my concern <clears throat> stems, I wasn't going to say anything today, but my concern stems from the last caller uh, who just called in. Uh, the tentative agreement between the ATU and the Golden Gate Bridge was for cables A and B. I'm sorry. Uh, the, correct. There was never an agreement between the district and the union to change any other cables whatsoever. Okay? So when a public caller is calling up and we have a report that looks like this, it's very, very confusing. I can see why they don't understand. Okay? I'm going to point to the general manager's report on uh, page 44. This is a regurgitation of the last one. If you look at, the, at that, there's a few points in there, the yellow where it's kind of highlighted. Uh, I do want to thank the board, who I think does a professional job. We just had a change of chairman and secretary, so it might have, we had a couple of up. But that was the very first meeting uh, that we had with the new chairman and uh, some new directors as well. Okay, so it might have not flowed the way that it usually does, but I promise you we'll get there. Um, as for the yellow, as for the highlights, uh, we did agree to change the joint and survivor benefit, uh, just like we agreed to in negotiations. Uh, if you go to the lower part, there's actually, yesterday we got out of a meeting, there is a firm, uh, Buck and Associates, which we met with yesterday in order to get the ball rolling on fixing this pension. But lastly, right in the middle, it says, the unfunded early retiree subsidy continues. That is not a subsidy, ladies and gentlemen. That is not a subsidy. That is the plan. That is the way the plan is set up. Just like anybody who has uh, worked at the district and has 55 at two and a half at 55, that's exactly how the plan is set up. That is the percentage. The 50% joint survivor benefit was a subsidy. This unfunded early retiree subsidy continues. That's the general manager's opinion. Okay? That is not the plan document. So I can see why this confuses people. And I hope that maybe we could we could make it a little bit more so, so people can understand. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Jane. Thank everyone uh, for your comments. Dennis, would you like to provide any comments? Sure. I'd like to thank all three speakers uh, for coming here this morning and weighing in. I want to miss, uh, wish Mr. Rohde all the best on his upcoming surgery. Um, we will hear your voice even if you're not here physically speaking with us. Uh, because your passion comes through. Uh, so we wish you all the best with that. Uh, the board has embarked upon a strategic planning process. There's been an advisory committee that's had some meetings, uh, but we anticipate in the coming month or months that we'll provide a draft strategic plan to the full board and the public based on all the public comments we receive and the hard work by that advisory committee's members to kind of sift through it all and to tee up what they think is things aligned with this board's values. So that will be coming up at an upcoming meeting. Uh, it's unfortunate if you won't be able to participate in this, we'll make sure that you get the information so that you can review it. Uh, with respect to Mr. Pilpel, he talked about uh, three issues. Um, the GG TARP is a separate entity. Uh, tables D1 and D2 uh, deal with the uh, spousal subsidy. They do not deal with the early retiree subsidy. Um, and so I try to be clear about that in my report, and I'll get to Mr. Shane Weinstein's comments in a moment. Uh, he also talked about a communication system. Uh, we have lots of communication systems, but we also have our own independent radio system that we own and operate. So if you look out uh, the top of uh, this building, on the other end of it, out my window, look at the top of the South Tower, you'll see big radio dishes. They, you know, one points to Mount Tam, one points to the East Bay. So we have an independent radio system that does not rely upon cell signals. Uh, that microwave system can also send data, so we have some redundant systems in place for our communications. Um, our security system at the bridge is a closed loop. I cannot look at things from home because then other people could look at things from home. So we have a, a lot of infrastructure that we use for communications. It's been thoughtfully developed by our communications department and our IT departments. And, uh, you know, clearly uh, he highlights a, a very big concern. We've all become personally more reliable on our cell phones. And we assume they always work. And when they don't, it's, it's quite troubling. Uh, and then... Um, uh, for agenda item 10a, I'll talk about that in detail when we come to the item. It's a continuation of some past delegation the board did. Uh, with respect to Mr. Shane Weinstein's comments, uh, the word subsidy is not my word. That is the plan professional's word. A couple months ago, you had Mr. Graham Schmidt come in here from Chiron. He is the plan's actuary. He was first hired about a decade ago. He was hired about a decade ago when the prior actuary, Millman, uh, left after being asked to approve 13 checks when the plan was underfunded. 
Uh, when he came in, his first report to the board looked at the plan, and he highlighted, and he, I'll use his word, the early retiree subsidy as one of the items. Because if someone is 50 years old and has 30 years of service and someone else is 60 years old and has 30 years of service, when they retire, most pension plans, the 50-year-old person receives a smaller monthly check because they're going to live a lot longer because uh, they have you know 30 years of contributions received. So the actuary, not just me, uses the word subsidy in referring to this. Uh, I reviewed the, his analysis from over 10 years ago as well as his more recent analysis uh, recently. So I just want to state for the record that the actuary uses that word. And if a pension plan gives the same monthly check to a 50-year-old and a 60-year-old who have the same years of service, that's not fair to the six-year-old individual. And it's important that pension plans have the appearance of fairness. Um, when I get to my GM report, I'll talk about the positive steps so that have recently taken place. And um, so I'll defer any further comments until then. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for participating. Uh, this concludes our public comment item uh, on today's agenda. <clears throat> We're going to move on to item number five to approve the consent calendar before we take our vote. Uh, are, are there any questions from the board members on the consent? Uh, Mr. President, uh, as I was otherwise occupied for all those meetings, I will not uh, be voting no with the outstanding. Thank you. Any other comments? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, now, instead of uh, a roll call vote, we're going to ask that uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. If there's any opposition, uh, let the record show that no opposition and the motion passed. <laughs> oh, we've got. We're going to ask Director here to vote so we can hear her aye. Okay, just. Just so we can show me how to that. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on to item uh, 6A, uh, report of officers. Uh, our general manager uh, will give his report. Get it in. <laughs> Thank you, President Cochran, uh, members of the board, members of the public. My written report is before you. You see before you uh, an errata blue sheet copy of my general manager's report. I should have been explicit as to what the one change is. There's uh, an item there talking about the research efforts on by MCC and the Barrier Council, and that item had the wrong web link in it. So if you clicked on the link on the initial report, it did not take you to the actual study. So the only change in the report that shows in blue is the that one web link. I would like to uh, just highlight a couple of the items in the report, and I'll start with uh, traffic. Um, travel in the Golden Gate Corridor is still well below pre-pandemic levels. People are not traveling between the North Bay and San Francisco in the same numbers. However, it is continuing to trend upward, which is a very positive trend. January of 2024, southbound bridge traffic was 7% above January of 2023. Similarly, bus ridership in January was 16% above January of 2023 and ferry ridership was 48% above January of 2023 ridership. So those are all positive trends. When I talk about travel, I always compare it to the same month a year earlier as opposed to the prior month because travel is quite seasonal. When the weather is crappy, like it was on Tuesday, we had only 31,000 crossings of the bridge southbound. Yesterday, we had about 45,000 crossings. That phenomenon is real, and so we always look at one month compared to a year earlier, and the trends are very, very positive. Um, with respect to um, the GG TARP, I did highlight in yellow what the changes are. It appears on page 44 of the staff report. And so uh, the GG TARP board met. Um, kudos to our, our new uh, chair of that board and the prior chair, Mr. Herrera. Chris Snyder, your uh, colleague, is the current chair. Uh, they worked out, so they got on the agenda an item to remove the spousal subsidy. Uh, that was an item we did negotiate with the uh, HU Local 1575. That was an item that was negotiated over two years ago. So we're pleased that that change was voted on by the trustees, but the record should state or show that it took two years to get it on the agenda and get it voted. That having been said, we'll follow up with the plan professionals to make sure now that it's been voted that it's actually implemented going forward. Um, the unfunded early retiree subsidy is something that does continue, and the subsidy word is the word of Graham Schmidt, the plans professional. The plan GT TARP board hired Graham, not me, so I'll use his word. Um, so it was a positive day. Um, for that board because they met, they talked about their business, and they took a positive action to 
uh, stop giving away money um, that wasn't earned by uh, trustees. But the bigger news is that the district hired a actuary firm to assist in the preparation of a rehabilitation plan. Uh, Mr. Schmidt recommended four uh, actuary firms. We went through an RFP process. We hired Buck. Uh, they're under contract with the district. And yesterday, the first meeting of the Rehabilitation Plan Advisory Group or Working Group met. Our representative is Director Chris Schneider. Uh, he's ably assisted by Liz Mason from Hanson Bridget. And then the uh, union had their trustees there. I believe it's Mr. Shane Weinstein, Dave Herrera, uh, Jim Lindsay, and then their attorney, Ben Lunch. So that process is the process that will fix this pension plan. That process that was agreed to was to develop a rehabilitation plan akin to a Taft-Hartley or ERISA plan, a multi-employer plan. And that's how other pensions fix themselves. You may recall last December, I announced that our Inland Boatman's Union pension plan was in the green zone. That's a multi-employer plan that a lot of our ferry employers are in. That had been in the red zone previously, but they adopted a rehabilitation plan and they took action accordingly. So that's the path we're on. I do want to uh, remind the board, though, that that path will lead to us making uh, much, much larger contributions to this plan at a future date. And I look forward to recommending that to you when it's coupled with changes in uh, benefits, uh, modest changes in benefits, but more significantly changes in governance. So the plan doesn't end back in the same situation at a future date. Um, there's lots of other items in my report. Um, we have um, always listing of the retirements and other changes in staff that are noteworthy. Uh, we oftentimes, we always give people the opportunity to come here. A couple of them could not make it uh, because they're traveling, but I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that Mr. Willie Gibson retired after a very, very long career with the district. He was our streets and ground superintendent, uh, a fabulous uh, employee and a great person to work with. Um, also, Keith Nunn uh, retired from the district after a long career. Um, they both started at the lowest levels. Willie started as basically a, a student intern while he was in high school with the district and worked his way up. To the, through the ranks to be our streets and ground superintendent. Uh, Mr. Keith Nunn started as a mechanic and worked his way up to be in charge of all uh, bus maintenance facilities and, uh, um, and uh, the buses. Then also, uh, Mr. Wilson Lau uh, could not be here, but he celebrates 25 years of service with the engineering department. He's a best person for our facilities, and so I'd be remiss if I didn't at least draw your attention to him. But finally, we have an employee of the month, and I'm really excited that the employee of the month can be here uh, especially since they flew in from India last night. <laughs> so Avninder uh, Para is our employee of the month. She has been with us a very short period of time relatively for you know people that retire after 30, 35 years. And she is a gem of an employee. She works in the human resources department. Everyone that works with her or near her sings her praises. Uh, she's been instrumental and active and integral with our Golden Gate Bus Operator Coach Apprenticeship Program in the Sonoma Marin Bus Operator Pre-Apprenticeship Program. Um, the Bus Division Mentors, Apprenticeship Coordinator, Training, Maintenance, and Operations staff consistently praise uh, Ms. Kawas uh, for her contributions. She truly exemplifies district values, and she is here with her husband, so I'd like to invite her to come up here so we can give her some recognition. Thank you, everyone, for this uh, honor. I was not expecting this, so this was truly a surprise for me. Um, just thank you to Kelly, Stephanie, and Michelle for always supporting me and guiding me through the district. And I hope I am motivated to continue to uh, contribute to the district's vision and mission. Thank you. That concludes the report. Okay. Uh, are there any any questions? Uh, of the general manager, Mike, Sam? A, a small correction. Um, the uh, Pension Trust Board did, in fact, agendize and take up the question of the spousal subsidy before this most recent go-round. Uh, we deadlocked on on on, on the item. Uh, it was, we, we chose an arbitrator uh, through the plans process. 
um, and um, that arbitration never occurred. Uh, so there was there was some personal frustration on my part in that, but um, but it was not, it was it was something we we did try to take up we did take up earlier, and and it uh, it it did not make it through the plans process. Thanks, Rick. Right. Uh, thank you, Rosenthal. Um, Dennis, there was a. Um, I'm only raising it because it was part of the material given to us. We it was, and I see the letters a couple of months old. But there's a letter uh, signed by the chair of the Pedestrian Bicycle Bicycle Advisory Committee on some recommendations. And I'm just curious if the district is going to address those concerns at some point and come back and give us a report or what? Well, yeah, we addressed them with the committee. Um, some of this, we had people testify recently a couple of meetings ago, uh, and so we get a lot of suggestions. Uh, some of them are things that uh, we can work on. Uh, some will take time, and some are things that may not be prudent. You may recall a couple of meetings ago, we had people testify about we need to get the pedestrians out of the bicyclist way, basically. And uh, some of those suggestions we will not be moving forward with, uh, but there's a lot of good suggestions that they have, and so signage is something that we're being is being reviewed. And uh, a lot of the focus is also on Alexander Avenue, where clearly, you know, that's a, a big undertaking, and we look forward to uh, several phases of improvements. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Director Masson. Yes. Um, I'm now a member of the GG TARP uh, Pension Trust, which I think I'm thankful for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and was, to put it mildly, just when I read the update. Uh, this, this month, I would have preferred to read about the positive, long awaited uh, steps the trustees took recently, and not the entire item uh, that we've seen before and that carries such a heavy negative tone. On a positive note, I look forward to the working group and the trustees making significant forward movements this year that we can all rejoice in. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other uh, questions of Mr. Mulligan? Uh, thank you, Dennis, for your report. We're gonna move on to item six. Oh, Director Hill. Just, just, just a quick mention. Uh, I attend those meetings, as, as you know, um, from the advisory committee, and there's an, an ongoing interest in wayfaring, and I'd like to hear uh, actions on that in a future meeting. Thanks. Sure. Okay. Your Director Snyder. <laughs> I'll just quickly say it was a really positive meeting uh, yesterday afternoon on the on the TARF uh, board and the and the uh, box that we had. Very professional. Uh, they're going to recreate uh, our actuaries' uh, findings, so they're going to reevaluate the plan from top to bottom with our current actuaries. And I think the process should take about six months, maybe. It's going to be a while because there's going to be some deep dives and some options. Uh, but if anybody's getting questions or everyone wants to talk about it, um, it's going to be a very uh, intense process, and it's going to continue for the next six months. Okay. Thank, thank you, Director Snyder. Are there any other questions of Dennis's report. If not, we'll move on to item 6B, our attorney's report. Thank you, Manolis. Thanks, Susan Talker. And the written reports this morning haven't taken any questions. And uh, this is two meetings in a row without a closed session. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any questions on the superintendent's report, the, the district attorney's report? Uh, let's move on to 6C. Ava is here to make her presentation. Ava? President Hawkeye, members of the board, my written report is before you, and I don't have much because I understand that I told you uh, I, I speak uh, too much yesterday, so <laughs> I just want to be brief this time. And I just bring to your attention that uh, what will be on the agenda item that follows my report is a very important step for the district. It's a huge seismic retrofit of the suspension bridge. It's a big lift for the district, and um, it will be a big lift for my um, department, the engineering department. But we feel really good that we have good people that will join our team, um, a contractor, an independent estimator, and we will have our design with us. So I feel really good that uh, it, it is a really great start for this very important project. Um, with regard to the suicide deterrent, uh, as you know, everything is right now closed. Uh, but the contractor is also responsible for another important work, which is the placement of our 
maintenance travelers. And um, on a positive note, they are fabricating now those travelers in Greenberg. Um, also, uh, we have completed the uh, field survey for the Alexander Avenue, and my staff is finalizing uh, requests for proposals from designers that will take on the issue of what to do to improve that part of the of the road. And with this, I'll be very happy to answer any questions the board may have. Thank you, Ava. Are there any questions of Ava? I, I know we spent some uh, presentation yesterday. With that, and oh, Barbara. Sorry, I just have a comment as part of Ava's. Um, Dick and I were just saying when we have public comment that we miss the Gamboas. Yes. Um, and yes. so that's a credit to you and your department for looking far enough that they feel comfortable that we'll continue. And I hope that uh, since they've been such strong advocates, uh, I would hope that as work progresses, there's some way that you could, or someone in your in your group could send them a text that says, guess what happened today, or send a picture of when the traveler comes, gets up. Um, Absolutely. It's, it's interesting and strange not to have them here, so congratulations. So, you know, I was about to you know, the day, and I, I, I really appreciate the last time they spoke, last month, uh, that they felt really good of what they accomplished. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a good feeling for all my staff that, you know, people like Gamboas and all the other families that started going through uh, those um, unfortunate and very tragic events, they can see that the district is really um, listening to them and uh, trying to, to mitigate and mitigate and stop the tragedy. Thank you. Thank you, Barb. And I, I may mention to uh, Amaret that uh, it's been over 10 years that they've attended every meeting that we've had through the COVID and everything. So, and we do miss that. So, anyway, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Director Hill. Yeah, I, I just wanted to thank you for uh, opening your activity on Alexander Avenue. It, it, it really needs the attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions of Ava? If not, thank you, Ava. Okay, we'll move on to uh, item eight. Uh, but with that, uh, I'm passing that to Mr. Manolis. Uh, of our committee reports coming. We have a, a member, I understand, to uh, to cruise or so. Yes. So uh, Director Thier, who is in New York right now, um, is recusing herself from this item. So just so everyone knows. And she will be removing herself from the uh, video and uh, audio that she's hearing it, and we will let her know when to come back. Okay. With that, we'll move on to uh, to uh, committee reports. Uh, uh, item 8, 8A, a meeting of the Building and Operating Committee. And was Director Garbarino. Thank you, President Coffin. And I, I would like to comment about Ava's humility and hard work. Uh, yesterday was quite Herculean, and she brought this item to us in our committee meeting. Um, great and formative. Great. So thank you very much. Um, bear with me. I have four parts here to this motion, and um, I will read through them. Uh, the Building and Operating Committee is recommending approval of board agenda item number 8A1 which is to approve actions relative to the pre-construction phase of project number 1923, Golden Gate Suspension Bridge Seismic Retrofit Project as follows. A, authorized execution of professional services agreement number 2023B015, Golden Gate Suspension Bridge Seismic Retrofit GC, Construction Services with Halmar International, LLC, of Nanuet, New York, in an amount not to exceed $5,754,332 for construction, manager, general contractor, pre-construction services, subject to the district receiving the Federal Highway Administration's approval of the award prior to the PSA execution. 
and B, authorize execution of PSA number 2023B042, Golden Gate Suspension Bridge Seismic Retrofit ICE Services, ICE, with Leland Saylor Associates of Walnut Creek, California, in an amount not to exceed $1,514,263. For independent cost estimator pre construction services, subject to the district receiving Caltrans approval of the award prior to the PSA execution, and C, authorize execution of the 14th Amendment to PSA number 2010B1 with HDR Engineering Incorporated, also of Walnut Creek, in an amount not to exceed $5,543,000. $833 for additional engineering design services to finalize the project construction documents and to assist the district in establishing construction price and schedule for the project during the pre-construction phase. And B, authorize an $8,540,031 increase in the fiscal year 2023-2024 Bridge Division Capital Budget for Project Number 1923 for the district staff and consultant services and other expenses required to develop the final construction documents and the construction price and schedule in concurrence with the Finance Auditing Committee as detailed in the staff report, and I so move. Thank you. Do I hear a second to the motion? Second. Okay. All right. Uh, our first, we will vote in the room, and then we'll we'll call call on our uh, other member. And she's actually on oh, the she, member. She's refusing to vote that. Okay. So, uh, before I ask for the vote, are there any questions related to the item? Seeing none, uh, thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Uh, is there any opposition? Let the record show there is no opposition and the motion passes. Sir Garbarino, thank you for your report. Any further reports? That concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to, to item 8B, uh, Director Rivet. Uh, would you give your Finance and Auditing Committee report? Thank you, President Cochran. Uh, the Finance Auditing Committee recommends approval of item 8B1 which is to approve renewal of the district's marine insurance uh, program, as detailed in the staff report, relative to the district's protection and indemnity coverage, hull and machinery, increased value and war coverage, including Terrorism and Risk Insurance Act, TRIA coverage, marine general liability coverage, as well as the excess marine general liability insurance program and vessel pollution coverage, for the renewal package totaling $943,167, effective February 20th, 2024, and I so move. Thank you, Director Rabbit. Do I hear a second to the motion? Okay. The move is second. Uh, are there any questions uh, relating to the report that Director Rabbit gave? If not, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, let the record show. If there's none, now we need to uh, make a uh, director uh, there. Aye. Okay, there. <laughs> got got the, the last. All right. Uh, let the record show that there's no opposition. And uh, Chair Rabbit, do you have anything further to report? I believe that includes my report. I just asked that there, there was no, I thought we had taken action as well on the uh, seismic upgrade on the finance. That was buried inside the one that she yeah. uh, Perfect. Yeah. That concludes my report. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Director Rabbit. There are no uh, uh, no addresses uh, to the board under item agenda item nine. Uh, moving on the agenda to item 10A, which is the action to delegate the general manager the authority to make uh, transit servo level, level adjustments through March 1st, 2025. And before I ask for a motion, are there any questions related to this item? Well, I'm to agree. 
Yes, would you please? I'll briefly explain the item. This is merely respectfully asking that you continue for one more year authority you delegated to me in the early days of the pandemic. The pandemic turned our business upside down. And so the board delegated to me the authority to make transit changes. Uh, and then uh, at the Federal Transit Administration requires that after a year we come back and do a Title VI analysis and go through a formal process. But the board's normal process, I would have to come to you and add several months to each step of the way. I'll give you a couple of examples of things we've done. One is uh, the first week of the pandemic, we started picking up and dropping off passengers in San Francisco for the first time ever. And that's been tremendously successful as SFMTA uh, hasn't been able to restore service to uh, the Marina District of San Francisco. We offer express bus service that's very well utilized by the community. But since then, we've been adding service. Last month, we added three ferry trips out of Larkspur. Um, and if I didn't have a delegated authority, um, when we realized we had the need, because things are bouncing back pretty quick, but we don't want to put too much out there too quick because then we're spending money, um, it would add several months to the, to the process to be able to do that. And so, you know, while things are continuing to grow, we think we'll be in an even better place than we are today, which is much better than where we were one year ago. So I'm respectfully asking that you delegate that authority for one more year so that we can continue to add back bus and ferry service as we see customers return. Uh, we're doing it judiciously. Today, our average number of passengers per bus trip is the same as it was before the pandemic. Uh, we're running fewer bus trips, which helps us tremendously financially. Um, but having that ability to quickly add things back uh, is really helpful. So I respectfully ask that you uh, provide that delegation to staff for one more year. Um, second. second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, is there any other discussion on the item? If not, uh, may I hear? Uh, well, I got the motion. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposition. Got it. I don't have to call on you. Trying to streamline the process. <laughs> Good. Uh, we have nothing under item. Oh, that that uh, shows the motion. Okay. Uh, we have nothing under items 11 and 12. Item 13 is communication. A revised communication uh, was posted online and in front of you on, on the blue sheets. Uh, if you would like a copy of any of the communication, please contact district secretary's office. Uh, that, that takes us to the end of the agenda. And we, are, we have no other business to be presented before us. And uh, may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So. <laughs> Thank you, colleagues. Uh, let us adjourn uh, this meeting for with a moment of silence for Richard Benjamin, uh, brother of Bridge Patrol Officer Fabian Benjamin, and Carol Bynick. Uh, so this chat. Thank you. This uh, concludes our meeting, and it's uh, 10.40. Thank you all for attending.